There's been a lot of noise at the moment about whether HRT is safe to give to women who've had breast cancer. In a clip on this morning a few weeks ago, Dr Louise Newson, a GP and a private menopause specialist, said this. We haven't got good evidence to say it's safe. We haven't got good evidence to say it's dangerous. Most of the studies have been done show that it's either neutral or safe. Oestrogen used to be a treatment for breast cancer. I'll be reviewing the evidence that said HRT was safe in another video, but for now, I want to focus on oestrogen. My take on that clip is that she's implying HRT must be safe after breast cancer because we used to treat breast cancer with oestrogen. The Dr. Newson promotes the work of an American oncologist called Dr. Avram Blooming. He wrote the book Oestrogen Matters. And in a recent opinion piece in the Cancer Journal in May 2022, he wrote, the contention that oestrogen causes breast cancer and that eliminating oestrogen is effective in both preventing and treating breast cancer has been challenged by the finding that oestrogen has been successfully used to treat breast cancer. Now, both Dr. Blooming and Dr. Newson are right. Oestrogen was used to treat breast cancer, but it's not what you think, and we don't do it anymore. And I can't sum it up better than Jen Gunter, who put this out on Twitter. We certainly can't use it as a basis for the safety of HRT in every woman after a breast cancer diagnosis. It's like comparing chalk and cheese. And I'm going to show you why. And I've got a load of notes here because I've looked at all the evidence. High dose oestrogen was first used in 1944 by Dr. Haddo. And this was well before the time when we knew about oestrogen receptors. It was only in 1987 that we started testing breast cancers for oestrogen and progesterone receptors, which were identified in two thirds of human breast cancer. Back then, breast cancer was just breast cancer. We didn't know about triple negative or HER2. Anyway, back to Dr. Haddo. He knew that oestrogen caused breast cancer in mice and rats in the lab. He also knew that some synthetic oestrogens stopped cancer growth in lab animals. He therefore thought it was reasonable to trial a large dose of synthetic oestrogen in women with advanced fungating breast cancers who were beyond treatment of either surgery or radiation. He treated 36 women with advanced breast cancer who were between the ages of 31 and 80. The oestrogen only slowed the growth in some of the women who were over the age of 60. It did not stop metastases forming. And in time, despite the oestrogen, the cancers became resistant and started to grow again. And there were severe side effects, nausea, vomiting, vaginal bleeding, and in some cases, congestive heart failure. By 1970, Haddo had got 12 UK hospitals to treat 10 women each with advanced metastatic breast cancer. And tumour regression, or slowing down the growth of METs, was three times more frequent in women over the age of 60 years. But in younger women under the age of 60, it sped up growth of the metastases. So it was recommended that oestrogen was only given to women with advanced breast cancer who were at least five years beyond the natural menopause. But it still had bad side effects. Vaginal bleeding, urinary incontinence, the fluid retention leading to heart failure that I've talked about. And in fact, high dose oestrogen is the drug widely used in the 1970s to prevent miscarriage. But in those healthy women, it caused infertility, stillbirth, breast cancer, cervical cancer and vaginal cancer. And not only that, in female fetuses who became women, they developed a rare vaginal cancer as well. And that's why that drug is no longer used. In the 1970s, tamoxifen was discovered and it was trialled against high dose oestrogen for women with advanced breast cancer. And it had the same response rate. It slowed growth in about a third of the women, but with far fewer side effects. And remember, this is before we knew that breast cancers had oestrogen receptors. How does tamoxifen work? It's like a broken key in a lock. It sticks to the oestrogen receptor on a breast cancer cell, preventing oestrogen from fitting anymore. Now, oestrogen drives tumor, tumor growth. So without oestrogen, the cell stops growing. It's targeted treatment. And we know, partly due to the development of tamoxifen, almost two thirds of women 
diagnosed with breast cancer are predicted to survive for 20 years or more. Eight out of 10 cancers in the UK are sensitive to oestrogen. Tamoxifen, as we said, was used with some success for women with metastatic breast cancer, but they then trialled it against a placebo for women with primary cancer to stop breast cancer coming back. And an overview of all those trials, looking at thousands of women, not the 120 that had I looked at, showed it reduced breast cancer relapse by 50% and improved survival by 30%. We know tamoxifen works. So how can both oestrogen and tamoxifen stop breast cancer cell growth? Now the fancy word for that is apoptosis, which a lot of people throw about. It just means cell death. It's the point of chemotherapy, radiotherapy, immunotherapy. How can both oestrogen and tamoxifen slow metastatic cancer in older women, but speed up growth in the young? And there are two theories. One is the oestrogen paradox or the gap hypothesis. But there's new research looking into high dose oestrogens for the treatment of advanced breast cancer. And they've shown that for it to work, there must be an extended period of oestrogen deprivation, several years after the menopause or on drugs like tamoxifen, aromatase inhibitors or fulvestrant. If a woman is then given a very high dose of oestrogen, it can be toxic to the tumour and it can slow growth. But they have to have that oestrogen gap. Another hypothesis is that breast cancer, particularly metastatic breast cancer, is composed of multiple different clones of cells, some that respond to oestrogen and some that don't. And we know that women with, women with METs often have different receptor profiles to the original tumour. For example, a woman with a primary triple negative breast cancer can develop metastases that are sensitive to oestrogen. And the theory is that when cells responsive to high dose oestrogen die after oestrogen therapy, the other small cells that are dependent, that are not affected by oestrogen, start to grow, which explains why high dose oestrogen stops working eventually in women with metastatic cancer. And that must be similar for cells that respond to tamoxifen. When they die, they can be replaced or overtaken by cells that have developed resistance or don't need oestrogen to grow. And that's why the cancer continues to mutate. So to sum up, yes, oestrogen was used to treat breast cancer, but it was metastatic breast cancer in the 1940s, 50s, 60s and 70s, before we knew about oestrogen receptors, HER2 receptors, advanced chemotherapy, the importance of surgical margins, targeted radiotherapy. It had hideous side effects. It worked in about a third of women, but only women over the age of 60. And if it was given to young women, it sped up the growth of their metastatic breast cancer. Yes, high dose oestrogen could become a new treatment for women with metastatic breast cancer who are running out of options. But again, older postmenopausal women who have had a good few years of oestrogen deprivation first. I don't think anyone could claim that HRT is safe for women with breast cancer based on the evidence I've explained for you today. Let me know what you think.